Hello, welcome to my third diorama. Can't quite believe I'm here already. I initially said I'll make around four a year, but I've had such wonderful responses from you lot. I've been encouraged to get my finger out and be more productive. So with this new diorama, I'm using Loot Studios figures again, and this time I've chosen a kind of angel figure, and I'm going to have her just coming out of a portal, which is also from Loot Studios. Now I want to set her in a kind of gothic architecture, and with that I've done some preliminary work, and that is to plan out the repeating structure of the tall arch window in a drawing package, and I've 3D modelled the sort of detail you often see on gothic architecture of churches, cathedrals, that sort of thing. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the arches in foam. And with that, I'll need a template. I'm going to cut out quite a lot of them. So I decided to make a substantial template out of wood. I fix the wooden template to the foam with cocktail sticks. Punching a hole in the foam doesn't really matter as it's easily covered up. I've only done half as this ensures I get perfect symmetry by just flipping half of them over and then first checking the wire on my foam cutter is perfectly perpendicular. I slowly cut round the shape and I do this very slowly as I want the cutter to burn at its speed not mine. It's very tempting to push a little bit too hard and then you'd risk snapping the wire. After cutting out all the arch profiles, I decided I wanted a little bit more detail. So I've stuck a scalpel blade to a little piece of wood and I'm using that to run along the edge of the foam to cut a large notch out just to stop the arch being too flat. After cutting out the notch, I'm left with a large amount of uh, smaller strips that I in turn cut in half in both directions and then glue it back onto the arch to make a sort of step which is a very simple way to create some extra detail. Now it's a simple task of gluing the halves together. I'm using foam safe super glue. It works really well, but it's about four times the price of ordinary super glue. So pros and cons. I must get myself some kicker as well, so I don't have to wait holding it together quite so long. I do have some in a giant can, but that sprays such a wide area. I don't want to use it. I'm now going to super glue the 3D printed window details, the ornate bit at the top and just down the sides. I'll be leaving the center details for when I've actually got a base for them to go into. Now I'm taking a piece of foam and with the arches I have, try to work out the overall floor plan. The diorama is on three sides with the front open where you'll view it from. So I'll need a low wall for the arches to sit on, on those three sides. And the dimensions of everything, I'm eyeballing as I go. I've only got a very rudimentary plan in my head and I'm letting it evolve as I go. I decided this low wall needs some details of its own, so I simply put some blocks of foam where the arches would meet it, which I think is something an architect is likely to do to give it more support, and then give the top of the wall a little bit of a lip. It's all very basic foam work. With all the proportions of the base sorted out, I need another bit of foam to act as the floor and that itself needs to be attached to something a bit more substantial. So I've got a bit of plywood cut to size and I'm gluing it to the foam with Gorilla Glue, the sort of glue that foams up when it dries. And because it foams up, it will push the two parts apart. So it needs weighing down. And what better than obligatory kettlebells? Also gives you the excuse, I've not been able to train as your kettlebells can't be moved. Now I have everything nicely glued down, it's a good time to mark out the floor area as I want to plan out where the tiling will go. I've decided on square tiles at a 45 degree angle and possibly paint them black and white. So after I've got the area marked out, I'm using grid of my cutting mat to work out where the spacing should be 
and just cutting into the foam, which will leave a permanent mark so I can see where everything goes. To cut into the foam, I'm using a very sharp 6H pencil, and there should be plenty to separate the squares and make them look like they are individual tiles. And then I'm using that same pencil to lightly scribe some random damage pattern, scuffs and whatnot, into those tiles. When I'm sure there's nothing else I need doing on the floor, it's a simple matter of gluing the low wall onto the base. I'm using Gorilla Glue again, so it'll need weighing down and set aside, preferably overnight, for drying. Now that the main base is ready, I need to get back to the arches. And there's a small detail at the top I was umming and ahhing whether to include or not, and I've decided to include it. And it's just a little raised bit that follows the a line of the top of the arch. And I'm going to cut them out of card, which should give it enough thickness to be picked up when dry brushing at the end. So I've dug out my old Cricut cutter as I wanted some accuracy and cutting them by hand just wouldn't have been as perfect. So it's a simple matter of drawing the shape out in your drawing package of choice, putting it into the Cricut software and letting it print out or cut out rather. And once that's done, I use some PVA glue to easily slide them into place. The bars that come down from the ornate window details at the top have been 3D printed in individual sections and I need to put something strong down the centre to give them enough support. And what you're looking at here is the third attempt. The first time I printed the little sections with far too thin a wall and they almost crumbled in my hand. The second attempt worked, but I've made the hole about the right size to take a piano wire, which was my first choice, but I couldn't get any straight lengths of piano wire locally. They all had it curled up, which would have been impossible to get it perfectly straight, and I didn't want to wait for a delivery. So I remodeled them again, making them a little bit larger, which I don't think matters too much, and put a larger hole down the center to take some barbecue skewers which worked perfectly. Now I need to attach these uprights. I'm sure there must be a proper architectural term for them, but I'll call them uprights. I don't think glue is going to be enough, so I need to pin them. And that involves drilling a hole down the upright and into the upper window detail. If I had some forethought, I could have modelled the hole into the top detail and not had to do a very dodgy drilling with very little margin for error. And I don't have a spare one printed, so fingers crossed. Now I have the very fun but fiddly bit of assembling all the arches in place, where I'll finally get an impression of how the overall diorama is going to look. The tricky bit is I've put pins at every opportunity on the bottom of the arches and I've got to try and glue and get them all in place at the same time. I've used the foam safe super glue which is all I've really got at the moment. Maybe I could have used the Gorilla glue but I couldn't really weight the arches down for that. I really must get some construction glue which is supposed to work very well on foam but I keep forgetting. With the main structure in place, I'm just going to give all the foam areas a good coat of neat PVA glue. And then when that's dried, two coats of watered down PVA with black acrylic paint. So the thing's nice and ready for dry brushing. And now the part I had least clue about how I was going to construct it, and that's the vaulted ceiling. So I started by making myself cardboard end profiles of the arch top. And I use that to work out the length of the curve and cut out a rectangle to cover the whole thing in cardboard as though I was just making a simple arched roof and I'd gnaw the, um, the corresponding one in the other direction. I'd worry about that bit later. Now it became very apparent that I couldn't do a good job of bending the cardboard. So I abandoned that and immediately went to thin sheets of plasticard. And that seemed to work very well. I've still got the big problem of how do I cut corresponding arch shape through it at 90 degrees. I tried sighting along the end and drawing the shape to be cut, but that immediately became apparent that was a useless plan. So I resorted to my computer and a good old 3D program where I made the shape in the 3D program, which was so much easier. 
and then using the texture unwrap feature I got a profile that I printed out and fingers crossed cut the shape out which looked very odd and amazingly it worked. The top of the roof will never be seen, it will all be covered up so I've decided to just tape it all together as the plastic hard weld cement I had had all evaporated in the jar and the little puddle left in the bottom of it seemed to have no welding power at all. But after this test fit I set the roof aside as it'd be one of the last things I actually attach because I need access to the space to do all the other processes. Back on the main structure I've now decided to give it an extra coat of black acrylic paint. I could still see gaps in the previous coats. I've given the floor in a light wash of white. I had started to individually paint some of the tiles white to make a checker pattern, but I didn't like the way it turned out, so I've just gone over and made the whole thing white, and I'll go back in and make the opposite ones black again. But while I've got the white, I've been doing a very basic dry brush over the whole of the structure, and this has nicely picked out all the details and textures, and I think that's all it's going to need as the main focus of the diorama will be the figure. The models need a bit of clean up where the supports are attached in particular. Plus this portal is in two halves so it needs gluing together and the seam filling. But before I do that I'm taking a little tiny UV light to try and shine inside the model. I understand there's a possibility that if you leave uncured resin inside a model and then seal it up gases can build up and split the model open never happened to me but it's not worth taking the risk. And now for what is becoming my favourite painting method and that's prime everything in black and then a heavy dry brushing with a fairly light grey and then picking out the absolute highlights with a pure white and this gives a, a great foundation for the painting to come. After the preliminary dry brushing has thoroughly dried, I'll then pick out some washes and lightly go over the whole model, again without any great plan, just choosing colours as I go. Plus here, I've decided this little top bit is going to be a bit metallic, so I'm choosing a near white to pick out the edges and simulate a bit of shine. After I'm done with all the washes, I start thinking about the details I ignored earlier and choose colours for those and pick them out by painting them with a mid-tone, all the while deciding whether they're going to be shiny or not. If they're not going to be shiny, after the mid-tone I will choose a slightly lighter version of the colour and paint that where the light would hit, but over quite a f large flat area. And that gives you a sort of slightly mattish look, but in, in the light to give it some 3D form, as well as a darker v version of the mid-tone where the light doesn't shine. If, if the object is going to be shiny, I do pretty much the same thing, but the highlight is smaller and brighter. Moving on to the wings, I've treated them in the same way, black primer, heavy dry brushing. Then with a plan to give the wings a graduated colour from top to bottom, I attempted some washes which just wasn't going to work. So I decided to bring the big guns out, use the airbrush, not the little tiny self-contained battery one I've got, but the proper with large compressor, which in my tiny little flat has to be packed away when not in use. I must admit the airbrush certainly makes the coverage easy. I'm trying not to overdo it as I still want the initial dry brushing to show through. The wings have this sort of man-made covering over them. Not entirely sure what it's for, but I've decided to paint it leather with metal trim around the uh, edges. And now on to the most important part, the actual figure herself. I've decided I don't want her to have human skin, so I've gone with a kind of purple colour. And it's all the skin areas I'm painting first as they're effectively the furthest away. I printed out the figure smaller than Loot provides, so she's about 54mm high to the eye level. And a very good painter could probably put detailed eyes on her, but my eyes just aren't good enough. I've tried magnifying glass, I've tried those head things you put on that, that have lots of lenses 
and go to fantastic magnification but when using that I have to have the figure within about 10 millimeters of the glass and it's always impossible to get the paintbrush in there and I certainly wouldn't be able to film it so if anybody knows of a way of doing extreme magnification but still be able to hold the object about a foot away or maybe more I'd love to hear after painting the skin I had to decide on the color scheme the wings go from a blue to a very ready purple so I've gone with blue for the main drapey sort of clothing and the hood and I wanted a complementary color for some parts of it so I've gone with orange a very um, subdued orange I don't want anything too bright the creepers on the portal behind her are a similar orange I think it's good to have the same color dotted about the whole scene that's something I do when I paint pictures don't have one color in one spot and nowhere else now one decision I haven't completely made yet is do I have a little bit of blood on the sword she's come through the portal and kind of presenting this sword I've left the story of the whole diorama very ambiguous lots of questions as to why she's coming through the portal and holding this sword the way she is but what do you think should there be a bit of blood on there or not I've left it off for the moment but it would take a second to add it. I'm still thinking about that one after the whole thing's finished. It's now a simple matter of gluing all the parts together. And where I'm putting the glue, I scrape off the paint to get down to the resin surface. The wings went in easily as there was a good plug built into them but what I really want is the angel to slightly float above the surface so I'm not going to glue her feet to anything at first I thought I was going to have to build some sort of wire structure coming off the portal but I found a good spot that I could simply glue her directly to the portal because of the big curve on the wings it still looks like she's well in front and again where everything touched I just scraped the paint off and then use super glue and it seems to have made quite a strong structure I thought a good choice of gluing the whole figure group to the main diorama would be just using hot glue and that seemed to have worked quite well now I think I've finished everything that's going on inside the diorama I'm safe to glue the roof structure in place and again hot glue being the choice although I'm gluing such a large area here I think my little tiny glue gun which I really love can't quite get the volume of glue out quick enough so I think I'm going to have to get myself a larger one for these circumstances My plan with the diorama is to clad the whole thing in polyboard and cut out the arch shapes slightly larger than the windows we have and then cover these openings with a night scene printed onto overhead projection film. My hope is I can project some light through this to get a moonlit scene. In a classic, not planning things properly, I made the window openings fractionally, and I mean fractionally, bigger than an A4 size piece of projection film can fit. So I had to go and get myself the much harder to source A3 sized. Fortunately, this was while I was uh, away over Christmas and I had time to wait for the delivery. After getting all the foam board in place, I looked into the diorama and I felt the overhead projection film was too transparent and you could clearly see the outside world beyond the windows. So I've tried putting some simple thin white paper over the windows to diffuse the light and that's worked quite well. At some point in the future, I'll replace that with some thin white acrylic which should do the same job and make the box much more solid but I don't have the money to get that at the moment. It's extremely expensive stuff around here. As this video comes to a close, I have some thoughts on what I would do different if I started again. 
and the main one is I print the portal bigger. I couldn't go a huge amount bigger as my printer bed size wouldn't allow it unless of course I cut the model up more than the two sections it already is. It's just at the moment I think uh, she would have to do some weird alchemy to get through the gap and you can't see most of it. I might have put stained glass on the windows rather than the uh, wooded moonlit scene I've got at the moment. I'm not sure. But in general, I'm fairly happy. And I really hope you all enjoyed watching. So please, if you could, like and subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll immediately know when the next one comes out. And I don't have a regular posting schedule because I never know how long these things are going to take. So you might miss it if you don't have that notification on. Thank you so much for watching once again. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.